Annyeong, everybody. My name is June, and I'm a developer and design evangelist at Zeppelin. Today, I'm super excited to talk to you folks about design delivery. But before we go into that, I'd love to tell you a little bit about myself and why I fell in love with design and development. Okay, so I know I kind of gave this away on my title card, but how many of y'all know what this cracker is right here? That's right. It's from the hit TV show Squid Game. And actually grew up eating this cracker in Korea. If you want to make this cracker yourself, uh, I think you just need some baking soda. If you do make it, share some pictures with me. I'd love to check it out. Uh, but before I immigrated over to the U.S., I knew three things about America. I knew McDonald's, pizza, and Michael Jordan. And when I landed in San Francisco, um, I didn't learn that much English from ESL books. I actually learned a lot more English from playing basketball uh, with non-Korean people. It forced me to speak English. And the one thing you need to have when you play basketball is some really, really cool shoes. And for me, at that time, it was this Jordan 3. I mean, it's probably still my favorite shoe right now. But uh, back then, I really fell in love with this design, firstly, because I never saw this kind of pattern on the front area and on the heel area. And I was really, really intrigued by this air bubble in the back. You know, Jordan's a high flyer. I was like, how can... You have a hole in the midsole. Won't the air bubble just break? Um, but when I actually got the shoes in my hand, uh, thank mom for that. Uh, and I cinched up the laces and I slipped on my foot. It really felt like magic. Um, I felt like the shoe was specially made for me. I felt like, you know, the shoe was just perfectly molded. Um, the design wise, uh, engineering wise, how it's made. And I was really infatuated on, Know, who actually made this, right? So the guy who made this was Tinker Hatfield, the guy to uh, Jordan's left here. And Tinker came into Nike when Nike was not what it is today. Uh, at that time, uh, Reebok was the number one shoe company. And Nike hired Tinker to kind of keep Jordan happy. So what Tinker did was he met with Jordan and got a list of all the things that Jordan wanted in the shoe. So when Tinker actually presented this Jordan 3 to Jordan, which is kind of weird, uh, he said, hey, remember, you know, when we talked about you wanted a shoe that, you know, was very innovative in terms of design. Well, this shoe right here has this thing called elephant print on the toe area and on the heel, and it will help you lock you down when you're kind of shooting the basketball. And then he said, remember when we talked about you wanted um, a way to kind of keep that cushioning on your heel area? Well, this part right here, this air bubble, we actually exposed it to give you a lot more dexterity and flexibility, but it gives you the same amount of cushioning you had before. And remember when we talked about you want a shoe that was mid-cut, so you, know, you could run really fast, make those cuts. Well, this shoe is a mid-cut, specifically designed for you. So I don't know Jordan personally, but I'm pretty sure when he slipped on these shoes, just like me, he felt like it was magic. Everything, everything, everything that he wanted in the shoe was right there, right? Um, Tinker really delivered on that promise of design for Jordan. And I think Tinker's been there for ever since, and he's still there designing shoes. And I still love his shoes till this day. Uh, in my past life at Xamarin and Microsoft, I worked as a mobile developer. And I really, really tried to recreate that magic moment, just like Tinker did when I slipped on a pair of Jordans, into the mobile apps that I was building. But I soon realized that code is only one part of the equation. The other part of the equation was design. And that was one of the main reasons why I joined Zeppelin. I really wanted to learn how to improve that relationship between designers and developers. I wanted to learn how to deliver on the promise of design, just like how Tinker did to Jordan. Design delivery might be a term you never heard about before, but I'm pretty sure that you experienced some of the paper cuts along the way. So to start, let's unpack design delivery with a high level overview of a typical product development life cycle. So usually you start off with the research process by talking to your users and figuring out what their needs are, right? Uh, really like figuring out what, you know, what you want to start building. And, you know, you may want to transition that process over to an ideation tool like a Miro, draw some really nice uh, um, wire diagrams, and then you might pass that over to your designer to use a tool like your Figmas, your Adobe XDs, and your sketches to actually um, start designing in that tool, right? And then the designer will probably toss this over the fence, so to say, to your developers. They'll start using their frameworks and their languages 
to actually start building uh, building that design to life, right? And then uh, before release, you want to bring in your QA person to make sure, hey, all the features uh, that I've built works as intended. And then you're going to finally release your product, right? But what about this little in-between phase where you kind of toss a thing over the fence from designers over to developers? It's a pretty convoluted process that's not really defined yet. And this is what we call at Zeppelin design delivery. And at Zeppelin, we think of design delivery in three parts. The first thing is all about design intent, communicating the design intent to everybody else and to know, hey, this is what we're actually building. And the second thing is inclusive collaboration, right? So it's not just your designers and developers like I talked about before, it's other people uh, in your team, like your QAs, your PMs, your copywriters that need a, a safe spot where to actually start collaborating. And lastly is automation and scale. You know, this is a design system conference, right? How can we get the design systems early on to the developers and to other disciplines to actually scale that as the product matures and grows. Okay, so first let's break down what design intent is all about. So usually your designers will share the designs, right? But they're gonna keep iterating on it. And then they're gonna have all these different versions like the 1.0 and 2.0 and 3.0 and stuff, right? So not only do you need to know what the final design is, but you also need to know all the different iterations that take place, right? So before we even begin to understand what the intent of the designs are, we first need to kind of sync up on what we're actually building. And then this process is what we call finalization. I'm sure you folks have this experience before, right? You kind of toss this thing over to your developer, if you're a designer or vice versa, and you know, your developers will be like, hey, is this is the final one? I'm not sure, is it? Is it, right? And then when you think about the way the tools are built today, this kind of thing about latest designs or final designs is, is a thing that you got to consider. And what I found is that the latest design is sometimes not as useful as a design that's been you know, viewed as finalized or locked. And here's a couple of reasons why. The first thing is that, hey, if someone in your team that's working asynchronously saying that, hey, this design is ready for other people to look at and get feedback, you need to make sure that that design is that final one, right? It's not the latest one, but it's the final one. And the second reason is that, hey, that once a decision is, is made, that this is the locked one, the other team members will know, hey, nothing will change from that. I am fully confident that I can start building from this right away. So this is very tough in design tools. And I've seen like some of my friends that are designers just do extra work for themselves, like you know, creating duplicate pages or duplicate files just to kind of like show them, hey, this is the final one and this is the one that you should be building off of, right? And then the second thing is that, hey, how do you keep track of all these different iterations or all these different versions, right? I mentioned all those 1.0s and 2.0s, right? And the 3.0 versions. So how do you keep all track of that? Well, like from a developer standpoint, usually what I do is use something like Git, like a source control. And whenever I, I, I commit or push new uh, code up to my existing repository, I write a very detailed commit message so that other people, people that may have never even seen my project will can come into my, my source code and see, hey, these are all the changes that happen over time. And then they could see, you know, what I've done in the past and really like, you know, do it by the commit messages, right? And the second component of communicating the design intent is to make sure you're aligned with your team on how things should work. So things like details on the screen, the big picture, a very macro view of, of how the user journey is going to work, right? These are all the things that, that you know, your team is going to need to, to actually start building on it. So if I'm a designer creating an experience for my users, it's my job to be in the shoes of my user and to plot out all the different conventional paths that they'll take and all the different outliers that they may or may not take, right? And this is really, really important to consider because you really want to see a very macro view of how the application is going to work. So then after we understand the flow of it, we also need to kind of dig into the details of each individual screen. And when I talk to all my PM friends, they really like to be very detailed with their documentation. And they use tools like maybe like Notion or Confluence to store them, right? But the biggest gripe I've been hearing from all PM friends is that 
hey, like, it'd be, wouldn't it be nice if you could connect something like a confluence to the design tool so that they know the flow of everything, right? So that it's not siloed. And I think that's the biggest reason why, um, you know, their kind of efforts are going unheard is because it's, they're, they're not connected. You know, the, the, the flow is not connected usually to the actual documentation. So the third and final component of communicating design intent is to provide the developers all the technical stuff that they need, right? Specs like colors, textiles, components, right? And, you know, this is the thing that, that should be standard in, in any kind of handoff process. But developers today need a lot more. They need a lot more than just specs. They need things like spacing tokens, things like design tokens, things like layout specs, right? So to quickly recap, design intent is three things. First, you need to clarify what the final design is for your team and then where they could see all the different versions and where they could actually go back in time and see what's changed. Then, you know, it'd be really nice if you provide a very macro view of how the different screens are connected with documentation, right? To give more context to the actual design. And lastly, the developer is going to need all the technical stuff in one spot. And it's usually just more than specs. It's things like I talked about, like design tokens and spacing tokens, all that kind of stuff needs to be in one spot. So the developer can know, hey, this is my source of truth. And I could go to this one spot and get everything I need to actually start developing. Now let's get into the second component of design delivery, which is something we call inclusive collaboration. Inclusive collaboration has a couple of different parts. The first part is something we call multidisciplinary collaboration. So quick story time. Uh, when I first started building mobile apps, I thought, hey, how often will I need to interact with a designer or a QA or even a PM? I'm a developer. I know how to code this. Like I could definitely ship this, right? But I quickly, very quickly learned that it's not just a developer. It's not just a developer and designer. It's the whole team with you know PMs, even execs, even marketing, uh, even copywriters, right? They all need to kind of come together and work together like a finely tuned engine to actually make that engine or that design come to life, right? And you know, with designers, they're very used to a design tool like a XD or a Figma or a Sketch. And each designer has their own particular way of organizing their screens, right? But as a developer or as a different discipline, when I go into this design file, um, I don't know what's going on. Like, for example, when I was working on a sketch file, when I first started developing, I didn't realize it was an infinite canvas. So I selected on something and I accidentally deleted it, you know, because I, I, I really didn't know how to navigate this design tool, right? So this comic right here kind of illustrates that, you know, this is a designer and you know, this designer it made something really, really more remarkable in the background. It's definitely confusing, but to the designer, they're like, hey, you know, this definitely is awesome and it will make sense for the whole team. But in reality, <laughs> most of your team will be like, uh, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what's happening here. Where do I find this stuff? How do I even navigate in this infinite canvas, right? Um, so then the question becomes, hey, you bring all these people together. How do you bring structure and organization to these screens, right? Um, so here is a, you know, a little illustration of, you know, a, like a wall of screens here. And, you know, in some ways it will make sense to maybe a designer, but to other people, it won't make sense. And someone like me, I may accidentally delete it because I didn't know it was an infinite canvas, right? So to quickly recap, inclusive collaboration can be boiled down to two points. Uh, the first thing is about bringing all these different disciplines together so they can work in harmony to actually bring that design file to life, right? It's just like the engine. You know, if there's one specialty piece in that engine that's not working, I'm pretty sure that engine is not gonna fire, right? Even though they're all different parts of the engine, they have to work in unison to actually fire up the engine, or in this case, to bring the design to life. And the second thing is that once you have everybody in a common place, there needs to be a common structure that everybody understands that you could just go in. You don't need any instructions like, you know, hey, this is what we're working on right now, right? This is that final design that we talked about a little bit before. So structure and organization is super important. The third and final part of design delivery 
is something we call automation and scale. And this is really about extending the design system early and often to other disciplines like your developers in QA and really bridging that gap between design and code. In order to scale and automate your design delivery workflow, the very first thing that you should do is to make sure your design system is not just for designers. If you have a really clean, robust, uh, detailed, awesome design system, is it really that great if only designers are using it? My answer to that is absolutely no. You know, you really want to have other disciplines come in early and often to the design systems process because one is that they will know how to contribute to it, right? They'll have more skin in the game, so to say. But number two, and more importantly, is that they can see everything that they need to actually start building this design right away, right? Bring this design to life. Um, the second way to extend the design system to developers is to connect those design elements to production code. So usually when you're first designing stuff, your designer will use a tool like uh, XD or Figma or Sketch, and then they have their own design file. Then your developer might be using something like, um, I don't know, like a VS Code or something like that. And then the developer has their own developer file, right? And fundamentally, those two files are disconnected. And we really need a way to connect them together. The last and final piece of automation at scale is customization. When I talked to all my techie developer friends, I soon realized that even though we had the same role, our process is very different from team to team, right? And that's why I think it's really important that all the tools that we use every single day, like your Slacks or your Teams or your GitHubs or your Figmas, there needs to be a way to connect them all together, right? Uh, because if you don't have that, you're gonna have to be flipping through multiple different applications just to work on something. And that sounds really painful. So the three main areas of design delivery are number one, to make sure we're communicating the design intent, to make sure that we're really crystal clear about why we should build the screens this way, right? And how we should build them. And we achieve this by making sure that all the designs that we share with our developers are the finalized versions. Then we need to make sure that we communicate the design intent in a clear way through flows. And flows will really give you that macro view, right? It will really give you all the different iterations where a user will take. And step two is all about being inclusive, is that you know all your teammates come from different backgrounds and different disciplines, and they use different tools. And there needs to be a way where they could all come together, like that engine, right? Where every single piece needs to be firing in the engine for the engine to actually fire, or in our case, to actually deliver on that promise of design. And lastly is the automation and scale part, right? So when you're using the design system, you really want to scale that to the entire team so everyone can get value from the design system. It's not just the designer. It's not just a, it's not just the developer. It could be the QA. It could be other parts of your team that really needs that. And it brings the whole team together as your source of truth, right? At Zeppelin, we really believe that design delivery has its own phase within the product development lifecycle. And as we discussed, there are a lot of big problems in the whole design delivery process, right? And I'm really excited to share how Zeppelin is really creating that magic, it just works moment into the design delivery process. Remember when we talked about finalization and the importance of clarifying what the team will actually work on? Well, once you publish your designs to Zeppelin, the screens are not editable anymore, meaning that it is completely locked. So that's basically telling your team, hey, these designs are final and they're ready to get worked on. And if something does change over time, what's really cool about Zeppelin is that just like in GitHub, I can write these detailed commit messages to go back in time to see what has changed on this particular screen. Now, my designers love me because I don't have to ask them to do extra work. You know, I don't have to be like, hey, make sure you make a duplicate copy of this or maintain this page. I get exactly what I need from Zeppelin. I know what the final design is and I know how that, de how that design has changed over time because of Zeppelin's rich version history. Now, remember when we talked about providing all the technical specs that the developer needs to deliver on the promise of design? Well, Zeppelin automatically generates tailored specifications based on the platform that they're working on. I also get much more than just specs from Zeppelin. I get things like design tokens and really precise code snippets. Our code snippets are actually built and maintained by the community 
And we have the latest and greatest languages like uh, Flutter or even things like React Native. And if you find something that's not there, just let me know. And I'm pretty sure that someone from our amazing community can uh, make that up in a jiffy. Remember when we talked about documentation and flows to communicate the design intention? Well, I have a little secret to share with you, but you have to promise to keep it on the down low. Uh, I'm really excited to announce that we are working on flows. And this was one of our most requested features, but we wanna do it a little bit differently than most. Uh, we want to kind of couple documentation with flows so that is one, you get everything that you need by just looking at it. And two, there's no extra documentation that you need, right? Everything is in context of the design. So that feature might be coming out early next year, maybe February, maybe January, wink, wink, hint, hint. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to that. So this is our workspace in Zeppelin. And notice that, you know, it is way more structured and way more organized than the wall screens that we just saw in, in our design tool, right? And in Zeppelin, you have things like sections and tags where you could kind of make this organizing structure where everybody can understand. And we have really innovative stuff like screen variants where you could couple um, you know, similar screens into a cluster. And it's really too easy to combine all of that. You just drag and drop. And it really clarifies you know, what the flow is and, and, and how that all makes sense. So Zeppelin is really about you know, translating all those wall screens into a structured environment that the whole team can start contributing right away, right? There's no need for extra documentation or extra work or instruction manual to figure out you know, how to navigate within Zeppelin. It just works. It's like magic, it just works. Um, remember when we talk about automation and scale and we touched briefly on the importance of designing the design system early and often to other disciplines like your developers? Well, with Zeppelin, you can connect your design components to code components and you can power your designs with the data coming from your design system. A really important piece of automating your design delivery workflow is customization. And that's where integrations come in. Remember when I talked about hey, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you had a way to connect all the tools that you use every single day, like your Slacks or your Jiras or your VS Codes or even your Zapiers into a, a unified platform, right? And with Zeppelin, we really pride ourselves in creating an open platform where we can integrate with almost all the tools that you use every single day, right? And in this case, within our Slack, every time something changes within Zeppelin, you get a notification on, hey, what has changed? And you also get a little preview and it really, really gives you color and context on what the team is working on. So this really allows you know, every single person on the team to get the right information at the right time with less context switching, with less app switching, right? You don't have to, kind of go command tab every single time to kind of go back and forth. You know, you get everything that you need right away. And at Zeppelin, we believe that design delivery is a distinct phase within the product development life cycle. And like design creation and development, design delivery has its own sets of problems and requires its own sets of solutions. Zeppelin is that organized workspace to publish designs where the entire team can collaborate to ship beautiful products together. To me, Zeppelin is like putting on my favorite pair of Jordans. Zeppelin is like magic. It just works for the whole team. It's really easy to communicate the design intent. There's little to no training. There's no instruction manual and everyone could jump right in and start contributing. Uh, Zeppelin is a place for all disciplines to come together and have that single source of truth and get what they need when they need it. And it's really, to, it's really, really easy to extend the design system to developers and other disciplines so that the whole team uses it early and often, right? I love to learn how you folks handle design delivery. We just started a Discord channel not too long ago, and I would love to kind of hear and see how you folks handle design delivery. Um, the first 20 people will get these custom t-shirts, which are really, really nice. And um, looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thanks for having me. And I really hope that you all have a great time at Clarity.